Healthy plants need healthy soil for healthy growth. To be able to precisely absorb what plants need, the soil needs to contain minerals and the necessary soil life. Research shows that the widespread use of synthetic fertilizer leads to soils that no longer have the required biology for healthy plant growth. Fertilizer comes from a time in which there was no understanding of the long-term effects on the soil. For farmers, fertilizer was a miracle. The harvests doubled and growers were able to provide the required food for a growing population. But now, after years of using synthetic fertilizers, the effects on soil quality are apparent. Increasingly, it is seen that fewer nutritional minerals remain in the soil, resulting in plants that quickly become weak and diseased. They are no longer protected by bacteria and fungi, but instead are attacked diseases by, by spraying, does little more than suppress symptoms. A healthy plant is able to keep most plant diseases out. In response to the negative effects of using fertilizers, pesticides are used to save the harvest. The conclusion we can draw is that plants that are only given fertilizer will ultimately always become diseased. Fertilizer is the direct cause of the use of most pesticides. In order to resolve the worldwide problem of over-fertilization, the vicious circle must be broken. The question that we must ask ourselves is, how can we improve the soil? The answer is surprisingly simple, but requires some explanation. Just like every other organism on the planet, a plant does not function independently. Health and growth depends on a partnership between specialist bacteria and fungi. Plants, fungi and bacteria form a wonderful system based on trading products. How does it work? Fungi and bacteria supply nutrients from the soil that would otherwise be hard to reach. In exchange for this, plants supply sugars in the form of glucose. To explain this system, we will explain bacteria and fungi separately. Plants have a problem. Their fine absorption roots have a limited capacity. They only use 4 to 7% of the soil volume and are, on average, not thicker than a hair. They don't live long, only one to three weeks. As you can see, plants need external help. Plants use their absorption roots to forge a partnership. If they can't find partners, they'll die. If they succeed, it's the start of a beautiful relationship. From now on, a symbiosis can be created. Minerals are hard to mine from the soil, but rhizobacteria are specialized in this process, particularly when it comes to releasing phosphate, which is very important for the plant. These bacteria also carry out countless other important tasks, including one which is very special. Rhizobacteria form a sort of natural defense system around the roots. Anything attacking the plant is kept outside by the physical presence of these rhizobacteria. They ensure that there is no room for disease-causing bacteria. They have their own interest in this because the plant provides them with food. However, the bacteria also need help. They are not travelers. The bacterial colonies do not move back and forth from minerals to the roots. The symbiosis between plant, fungi and bacteria is not only a great partnership, it is absolutely vital. Without these transformers of organic material, we would all perish in excess organic material. Returning to the question we asked previously about how we can improve the soil, the answer must be, ultimately, plants improve the soil on their own. They do this through the symbiosis between plants, bacteria and fungi. Plants are really the only soil improvers. Here we can see a clear difference between an absorption system without and with mycorrhiza fungi. The plant on the left is entirely dependent on the pH value of the soil and the supply of minerals. The plant on the right 
has roots that are able to optimally self-regulate the pH level and absorption via mycorrhiza fungi. This results in a healthy absorption that works perfectly with organic fertilizers. Using this natural system, we will achieve healthy soil that in turn brings healthy plants that can produce healthy fruit and vegetables. The way we deal with our soil has a direct effect on the emission of CO2 and the nutritional value of our food. We, a family. Designed by nature, delivered by us.